Linus Tech Tips coverage of CES 2014 is brought to you by NCIX.com, your source for great technology, selection, and service, along with Corsair Memory and Western Digital. Better onboard graphics is great for lots of things. We can't necessarily all agree on what it's better for. I mean, some people might go, oh, well, I can use uh, graphics cores and OpenCL to accelerate certain content creation workloads that are more optimal on a graphics core than they are in a CPU core. Gamers might go, oh, well, hey, I can, I can, you know, play games like Dota 2 or League of Legends on my onboard graphics rather than getting a dedicated graphics card. And then folks who just want to enjoy media content playback might go, oh, well, if my onboard graphics can handle a couple consecutive 4K outputs, well, hey, that's great. Then I guess I don't need a dedicated graphics card for that. But I think what we can all agree on is that one of the best things about onboard graphics is the fact that they're tightly integrated with the CPU, which enables lower power to go along with that high performance and even lower heat output compared to dedicated discrete components. So we are on a voyage of discovery where we're going to be traveling the show floor and the suites to find not necessarily as many implementations of Intel Iris series graphics as we can, but definitely the widest variety that we can find. So there will be like notebooks and all-in-ones and even this thing, whatever this is. Stay tuned for that. Okay, I'll tell you. It's a computer. It fits in my hand. And on my head. Okay, it's not really good for that. Now, this isn't exactly what I had in mind when I first heard about Crystal Well, or as it became Iris Pro Graphics, but this is the Bricks Pro from Gigabyte, and they've actually got a full lineup of them, but what I want to focus on is the Pro. So there are two different ones right here that are running a couple of different configurations. This one has an Intel Core i7-4770R, and I want to show you guys for scale what this thing looks like in my very small hands. It really is a handheld PC. It's about like two NUCs stacked together. We have both HDMI and mini display port out, gigabit LAN, super speed USB 3 on the back and on the front, a Kensington lock, and what looks like a pretty beefy copper heatsink inside. It can accept both an MSATA SSD as well as a two and a half inch hard drive. But uh, what's really impressive about this is the fact that this is Battlefield 4, and I'd like to take a moment and show you guys the graphics options that we have running. So we are running Battlefield 4 at 720p, medium details, a motion blur off, and getting an acceptable gaming experience. On onboard Intel graphics, that is a first. But the Core i7 model isn't the only option. So this one right here uses a 46, or rather 4570R. It also has the same expansion. And you can see we're running a 4K video demo over HDMI. Ah, yes, thank you. So on this one, we've got a 4K demo running on a Seiki TV. And uh, I guess the if the objective is to show that Iris Pro can handle 4K video playback without any difficulty, then mission accomplished. One thing I wouldn't mind checking out, and this is something that I didn't necessarily mention we were going to do, is I would love to see what our CPU usage looks like while this is going on. Yes, friends, we are looking at about 29% CPU usage playing back 4K video on a machine that can literally fit in your pocket, if your pockets are very large. In our quest for Intel Iris-powered devices, you might say that the pickings have become, whoop, I almost dropped it, that would be bad, a little bit slim. This is the ASUS ZenBook UX301 LA. It is an extremely thin Core i7 Iris-powered Ultrabook that features a 2560 by 1440 display, and of course the graphics horsepower to back it up. Did I mention it has Iris inside? On the back, it has Corning Gorilla Glass 3. On the inside, somehow, inside this tiny enclosure, they've packed USB 3 super speed, micro HDMI, more USB 3 super speed, display port out, an SD card slot, and of course, well not of course, this doesn't, this can't take this for granted, it's got up to 8 gigs of memory and up to 512 gigs of RAID 0 SSD storage, making this one thin LED backlit sexy ultrabook iris powered device.
Oh, sorry, didn't see you there, guys. I was too busy playing Grid 2 on a battery-powered 21-inch all-in-one that's running Intel onboard graphics. We're running at 1080p with medium details. It actually looks quite excellent, and this is the Sony Viotap 21, another unique iris design that we haven't seen before. It features a Core i7-4558U, so that is a dual-core, four-thread Core i7 processor. This particular one has 16 gigs of RAM on it, it's got a 1080p display, it's got NFC, and this is the real kicker for me. I mentioned it briefly before, but this thing is battery powered. You can actually run for a few hours away from wall power, should you so desire, and on top of all that, it's actually quite slim. So it's got a nice aluminum backing here, it's got a full 10-point multi-touch touchscreen, and then it's got a gorgeous little aluminum stand that allows you to adjust your angle, either up more vertical like this as would be suitable for more like desktop use or you know if the kids are playing Angry Birds or whatever else you can actually fold it down all the way flat and use it as more of a tabletop style display well display and full computer this is the last stop on the Iris train here at the show. This is the CyberPower Zeus Hercules. It features an Intel Core i7 quad core 4750HQ. So that is pretty much, okay, it's like a mobile workstation, right? So you can use the quad core processor to do pretty much whatever you want in terms of photo editing or video editing. You can use the, uh, the video decode and video encode features on the GPU. So that is the Iris Pro graphics for those applications as well and all of that is within a very very slim form factor now with that said why don't we just sort of step aside from the workstation thing for a minute? Okay, yeah, it's got a 1080p display. It looks really great. It's very portable. It's actually reasonably lightweight when you consider what you can do with it. But let's talk about the gaming capability of Iris Pro graphics. Uh, yeah, okay, CPUs with Iris Pro do consume a little bit more power. But remember, guys, you don't then need to add a dedicated graphics chip in order to get acceptable performance. Now, I've got a friend over at Intel who was kind of telling me, okay, yeah, Iris Pro, you're looking at 30 40% better than Iris. But what does that mean in real life? What it means in real life is that they've actually used this very notebook to run professional tournaments with thousands and thousands of people watching them without anybody ever actually realizing. So this is a StarCraft II 1v1 that they were running off of a notebook with integrated graphics. So I hope this whole showcase where we've got all-in-ones with batteries, we've got gaming notebooks that don't have dedicated graphics chips, we've got little tiny PCs that can hook up and play 4K video. I hope this has given you guys some perspective on the variations that can be achieved. Variations! Why did I even say that? I was doing really well until like I completely jumped off the train of how well that video was going. Anyway, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Maybe I was just like too, too dazzled by all the variety that we just saw. I needed to come up with a new variety of word to describe it. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for our Irish showcase here at CES 2014. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. As always, don't forget to subscribe. And the last thing I'd like to ask you guys is out of all the different form factors we saw, which one is your favorite in this video? Just leave a comment under the video and let us know.